Hello, my little dragonettes. Um, I don't know if, if I have it off to here, if you can hear me or not, so... Um, <laughs> this guy likes... He, he doesn't sit up very well, so he'll be on my lap. But uh, today, I will be rambling. That's my bookmark for this notebook, my rambling notebook, about the fallbacks bound for ruin. Ru ruin. Ruin. <sighs> Let's get closer to the camera so you can see the cover. Yes, it is a D&D &D book. And I picked it up because it's a D&D &D book. And you are going to be in the way, so sorry. So, I have words about this book. Overall, it is a, oh, it's ADD moment. Uh, overall, it is a very good book, a very good story. I do like it, and um, I'm excited for the rest of the series because I am very sure this is just gonna be, that they're gonna have more of these than just the one, sh this one book. Uh, I like, I do like the fact that we pretty much get a chap one or two chapters with every character uh, except for this guy. We I have yet to get a chapter in the POV of this guy. But we have a bard, a tiefling bard, a human fighter, a elf rogue who is the party leader, a human wizard who is literally just me. <laughs> My D&D character um, is a half-elf warlock who just wants to know everything and everything about ma anything and everything about magic and, and collects books. So she is me. And then a dwarf cleric who... Um, it's actually kind of interesting because you know how most clerics are attached to just one god or goddess? This guy's making uh, wheeling and dealing with like every god he can get his... Uh, He's like, hey, Ogma, um, I'm in one of your lost temples. I'm helping to clear it out and find it, and and maybe uh, we can reestablish, you know, this temple again. Can you help me with this mind flare? Yeah, that's actually how the book help starts. Uh, the party, it's um, it's just starting out. Like this is their first missions together, and so we start off the book in the final room of a lost temple to Agma, which is the god of knowledge in this world, and um, they're looking for a book called The Ruinous Child. And the, um, the first thing they fight, the, the boss fight of the dungeon, is a mind flare, an illithid, plus a couple of mind devour, uh, intellect devourers, I think they're called, yes. Oh, by the way, I forgot. That little creature in the middle, the, the, I cannot really pronounce its name, but it's an Utagat. Yeah, that's a pet. It's a very good bean. Um, I have two chapters marked off. Two chapters? Yes, two chapters marked off because it, they have two chapters in the POV of the little pet. And my camera is moving because, um, I'm shaking the desk. <laughs> so, uh... But I have to say my complaints because, like I said, I have words about this book. And it's not, let me preface this, the book is not bad. The story is good. I like the characters. And I just, if you start a book in a certain location, as in the party has already been formed, they've already gone through the dungeon, you can see that they're still struggling because this is their first time, this is their first dungeon as a group. There's, you know, the cohesion isn't there quite yet, but you can see it forming. It's just, 
if you start off with that, I personally do not feel we need to backtrack and get information on like how the party came together. If the book was about the party getting together, then I would be more willing to forgive that. But the party is already together. We don't need to backtrack and have chapters tell uh, like how they got like how they recruited the bard or how they recruited recruited the cleric or the wizard. Heck, the wizard actually we don't get her chap her recruitment chapter until like halfway through the book, and then we even go further back closer to the end of the book we even go further back to where we get the team leader in one of her lessons which we don't need because by that time we've already settled like we've already come to know these characters we know they are ticks we know that you know kind of, we know about them we know who they are right then and there obviously because they're they will grow i do expect growth from these characters they do grow even within this book they they you know the the bard has a bad habit of just upping and leaving in the middle of the night if things start getting a little hairy um and the cleric is so used to being on his own that he's not sure if he's like he wants to stay with this party granted he also says that you know if i leave i'll let them know i leave but i'm you know they're not completely sold on staying with the group as until like until he gets paid so we like we're seeing them grow into the team that they will become we don't need the backstory of where they come from or how they got recruited it just breaks the immersion of the story there are there is one kind of incursion and it's even written into mission in which we get the pov of the big big bad evil guy which is you know obviously a lich because that's clearly a, a skeletal face which you know okay i will give them that i do like an occasional side view into the big big bad evil guy um, in a couple stories, not all of them. This one happens to do it very well because I love a good D and D um, lich. I would also like to see a little more online flares, but yeah, you know, I I <laughs> as it, whenever I DM, I always throw in a you know, unless the story does not call for a lich, then I won't put in. I mean, not a lich, a, a mind flare. I like me my mind flares. They're kind of fun uh, villains to fight. Uh, you know, to, to uh, throw against the party. Especially when the party is full of uh, muscle heads. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. So, like, again, um, I don't think the big bad eagle guy was necessary. But, it, again, it was fun. I, it, it's just my main issue is the chapters that go back in time to to we don't need the back in time we don't need the past if we start with the party together we don't need the past maybe in another story it would work in this one it doesn't but uh, like I said it's a I like the book I really enjoyed it. I like the story. I want to see where it's going. Uh, obviously, this is a library copy. Um, so, no, I will not be purchasing a copy for myself. Although, I will be picking... When I find what the... You know, when I find the next book coming out, I will pick it up, again, probably from the library. But, I will read to you my two favorite chapters, which is from the point of view of the little... You know, Utagat, or however it's pronounced. Her name is Oogie. She is a good bean. Uh, yes, I will also, um, I will destroy the world for Oogie. Let's put it that way. Oogie had a mission. Oogie had to find her person, Baldrick. Baldrick person needed her. 
it was very important that Oogie find him. Her Tess person said so, and Tess was always, Look at this pile of treasure food! Apple cores, peach skins, gristle, potatoes, parchment soaked in eat, ink and cat yarn, more gristle, crunchy gravel, rust-filled water, straw laced with horse dung, ale, soiled rags, soiled bandages, rancid pork, a hairball, no, two hairballs! It was a feast, and Oogie could fit it all in her mouth at once, an explosion of flavors! Baldrick. Oogie crunched, swallowed, and lifted her eye stalk, turning it this way and that to get her bearings. The world was awash in smells and sounds and hidden delights in ev around every corner. Oogie wanted to savor it all. Savor all of it. This city that was a pleasure palace for the senses and the hunt. One more bite of straw and some yellow puddle water. Such sweet nectar. Now time to go. Carefully, Oogie, Oogie sorted through the scents, lacing the air, narrowing it narrowing down to the familiar scent of her baldric person's sweat, his wonderful beard that smelled of mint and sometimes bits of cheese. Oogie wished she had a beard to store her treasure food this way. The two-footed creatures were truly fortunate. There it was. Oogie pulled out the thread of her baldric person from the thousands of wanderers, of thousands of wanderers that called the city home and she followed it down the dark street, making a concerted effort to ignore the siren calls of food that lined the alley. Baldwick was more important right now. Oogie loved all her people, especially her test person and her aunts in person. They were the first friends she ever had, and they'd given her a name. Anson had insisted she needed one, so Tess had given her one. She was Oogie now, and she quite liked the name. So she would never let on to them that her Baldrick person was her favorite. Oogie was very discreet, but Baldrick had a wonderful beard that smelled like food. Oogie couldn't help herself. Oogie paused at the mouth of the alley. Footsteps were coming this way. Scrunching her body as close to the wall as she possibly could, she buried she burrowed into a pile of rags and crumbling crates, tucking her tentacles in close to disguise them. Just to be safe, she sent a tiny mind picture to whoever was coming, nudging them away from her hiding spot and on down the street to trace an imagined shadow. She waited in the dark, trying not to breathe too loudly as the footstep passed, footsteps passed by. Tess person was always warning her about this, Voices talked about a chase on the rooftops. Oogie hoped that her person, her test person, and Kajrin, her sparkly person, had escaped. But she wasn't too worried. Test person would make sure everything was all right. And test person had given her admission. She wasn't going to fail. The sound of the footsteps receded, and Oogie crawled out of her garbage heap and continued to follow the smell of Baldwick person. Oogie had never thought she would have this many people all to herself. She never minded being alone before. But now that she wasn't, she realized this was better. This was what she wanted, to eat and to be with her people. Wasn't that all anyone really wanted? Oogie considered this as she stopped to lap at another puddle. She was young, but hers was a good life. Or it would be again as soon as she found her Baldwick person. She licked her lips and trotted off to the night. Okay, so that was chapter 9. So pretty early in the book. And like I said, as soon as I read that chapter, I'm like... Okay, so this chapter right now saved the entire book so far. I would have been perfectly fine if that was the only chapter we got from her POV, but then chapter 35 comes around. Oogie didn't feel good. She had been hit by a cloud, except this was an evil cloud because it hurt. It had hurt so much. She tried to get up, 
but the room was spinning, and her legs didn't want to hold her. Stupid legs. The air smelled and tasted like something she wanted to spit out. She nev she'd never felt like this before. There were loud noises and huge, scary monsters everywhere. Oogie had never imagined there were so much monsters in the world. She didn't like that she knew about them now. She wanted her persons. Whenever she was scared or hurt, she looked for her persons. And they made her feel better. Her baldric person, with his magnificent beard, made her warm and happy inside. Casuan person created wonderful, sparkly things with her hands, and she was always giving Oogie treats. Sometimes at night, her lock person would sing to Oogie in the most beautiful voice in the world. Whenever she wanted pats and scritches and the finest belly rubs, her Anson person was there. And her test person. Wait, her test person was lying on the ground. She wasn't moving. She had been attacked by, the, had she been attacked by the evil cloud too? An angry growl came from Oogie's chest. If someone had hurt her test person, she would rip them apart and eat them. Then she would vomit them up just so she can rip them apart and eat them again. But a test person wasn't getting up. Why not? All of her persons had been hurt before, but they'd always gotten up. Why wasn't her test person getting up? Oogie planted her three feet beneath her, and with a mighty grunt, she pushed, her she pushed herself up, using her tentacles to keep herself steady. Her back foot dragged behind her as she moved towards her test person, but it was all right. Oogie had been worse, hurt worse than before. Oogie had been hurt worse than this before. Oogie was tough. When she got closer, she saw that her test person's eyes were closed. She must have fallen asleep. Well, Oogie can fix that. She went right up to her test person, scrunched down, and gently head-butted her shoulder, whining the way she did when it was time for treats. Those headbutts always made her, her test person laugh. Oogie adored that sound. Her test person didn't wake up. Oogie nudged and whined again, even going so far as to lick her cheek, even though her test person did not prefer this. But it didn't do any good. Oogie hated this. She was scared and hurt, and nothing she did make made any difference. There were still monsters everywhere, and her persons couldn't help her so she'll just have to help them instead. Standing straight, Oogie planted herself beside her test person and made her body as big as she possibly could, stretching her tentacles and bulging her eye stalk. She knew she would never be as big as the other monsters, but that was all right too, because even though she was afraid, Oogie could be brave. She would be brave, and she would protect everyone, because that's what you did for your persons. All right, so um, those who are, those who watch my videos who have nothing, who have no idea about D and D and the creatures, um, the Utaga, or however it's pronounced, because I've actually never used these before, they are literally a three-legged walking mouth and stomach. <laughs> they are the garbage eaters, and uh, they have like these two tentacle, like very long tentacles that I guess they can use as uh, kind of hands to sweep into their mouth. And then like one third tentacle that's got like three eyes. Um, I mean, they made it very small in here, but they made her like a big roly poly kind of thing where some depictions have the tentacles being much longer, the eye stalk being longer, it depends on the artist. But it's essentially a three legged walking mouth and stomach. Three legged, three eyed, two tentacled. And, uh, apparently I did look this up after reading the book. They can be intel- obviously, the book made it so, but they can be intelligent to a certain extent. So this depiction of her is not out of the realms of something possible within D&D, &D, and part of me now wants to kind of make an NPC with 
a uh, not a well not a full on pet like Oogie, one that has like a I guess a s- working relationship with one. I'll have to work that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would say so. There's one. There's a few things that I want to see in the next book. I won't go into details because a lot of it would be spoilers for this book, and I do highly recommend you reading it if... Even while Dungeons and Dragons itself may not be something you are familiar with, it's not really necessary. Um, It's, you know, it's a basic generic fantasy world. All you need to know, like, heck, even, like, If you don't know what an Illithid or Mind Flayer is, it's basically a Cthulhu monster. Well, human-shaped Cthulhu monster because it's, yeah, yeah, tentacle face. And they like to, you know, control people with their minds. They kind of do explain the creatures visually, so you don't, um... Like, again, if you're not familiar with D&D, they do explain what things look like. Um, Again, the internet is a thing, so you can also easily look up images. If you are a DD and d fan... Well, it's no Dritz. It's, um... And I can't say much about it because I actually never read any D&D books. Like, I I didn't even know Dritz existed. D&D is, um... I didn't get into D&D until, re- like, I guess 10 years ago. So I'm still learning about it and all of that. But like I said, it's... it would Yeah, no, it. I would recommend it. I would recommend reading it if you are familiar with D&D. I would recommend reading it if you are even passively interested in high fantasy because this is essentially a high fantasy setting but um i I would say probably an 8 out of 10 for me not a not a full 10 out of 10 i may have said that earlier but now that i'm thinking about it those two like the the three or four chapters that just yank you back to how they recruited the party members just I don't think they were needed if you remove them from the book entirely it would make no difference to the plot at all the chapters that follow the big the big bad evil guy the lich would also could also be removed entirely but I think they're more fun than the ones that go that follow the past so I let them I let them slide because they do kind of take place concurrently with the main storyline so while you don't have to read them and you don't lose anything you it's a nice little insight to the uh, the thought processes uh, the fun thing about the lich though is he they might come back it might not be the end of that lich but like you know, whatever happens in this book, it might come back. So. Yeah. Well, that's all I got to say right now. So, um, thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for listening to me to read. I will have, hopefully have more coming. I know I haven't really been active here. Um, but I do want to try and make more videos. I have a few more rambles that I want to, um, that I want to record, but I don't have, like, most of them are for audiobooks, so I don't have a physical copy to hold and read from. And some of them I can't even put my thoughts down into paper. They will have to be legit rambles. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for coming, my little dragonettes. 
Uh, uh, and uh, I'll see you all later. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have anybody who you think would be interested in any of these books that I have and my thoughts on them, feel free to share. Bye!